Good. Hello everyone, so as I was fantastically introduced, I'm Ollie, and today I'm going to be speaking about maximum fat use during exercise, and more specifically about the design of a study which my supervisor and I have created, as all will be revealed. So why are we interested in this? Well unfortunately chronic diseases and obesity is a major public health challenges, so for example in Bath there's about a 19% prevalence rate of obesity, slightly lower than the national or the English average of 24%, but still very high. And unfortunately the picture for the future is not looking much better. So 50% um, of the population could be obese, so that's one in two of us by 2050 in the UK. Um, so clearly something needs to be done to try and curb the obesity crisis and other chronic diseases. So one area of interest is our, max, is our, well, our capacity to use fat as a fuel, as this has been associated with cardiovascular benefits, so our fitness levels, and also with a decreased risk of um, type 2 diabetes with obesity and also heart disease. So during exercise, we have two main fuel sources. These are carbohydrates and fuels, and their relationship is reciprocal in terms of percentage of contribution to total energy use. So for individuals, so as fat, fat use is higher at lower intensities and decreases as intensity increases, and then the opposite for carbohydrates. When looking at fat use specifically, those of you which may have walked here today would have burned a little bit of fat, or quite a fair bit. For those which may have been a little late and would have had to jog, you would have burned even more fat. And then for those which are always late and never on time like me and have to sprint, you would have burned less. And today we're looking at maximum fat use, as this could be regarded as a capacity of our ability to burn um, fat as a fuel. So reportedly, our maximum fat use varies among all of us. So for instance, I would have a different maximum fat use compared to every single one of you. So that's what the literature has shown. However, one very important question has not really been um, looked at, and that is whether fat, maximum fat use varies within the same person. So for example, if I exercise today and then exercise next week and the exact same conditions and the exact same test, would my maximum fat, uh, fat use value be the same? Now the reason why this is important is because if we don't know whether it is the same, how can we truly say that it varies between people, um, especially if it's only been measured on one occasion, which is generally the case? How can we precisely measure factors that may influence or be related to fat oxidation, and also um, evaluating interventions? Um, and furthermore, predominantly the research has been in young, healthy, active males, and actually cyclists and triathletes. So this prevents information on other populations, um, such as females and at-risk populations. So there's clearly a need to reliably, so within the same person, measure fat use during exercise, and also accurately measure maximum fat use during exercise. So that forms the basis of the study design, which I'm going to uh, present in a second. So, we aim to recruit a wide range of individuals, um, males, females, old, young, um, active, non-active, a wide range, and they'll be in between 18 to 65 years old. And what we aim to do is we are, we'll be measuring diet and physical activity levels, so everything which you eat, drink, and do. And then we'll be asking people to come into our lab or laboratory in University of Bath where we will complete something known as a fat max test, which is quite simply just an incremental test to exhaustion, so stages get harder and harder and harder. And then 17 to 14 days later, we'll just be asking individuals to come in at the exact same time and complete the exact same test and the exact same conditions after recording the same, and hopefully they will eat the same meal or 24 hours before as they did for the first test. And then what we'll then be able to look at is, of course, whether fat use or the maximum fat use varies within an individual, we'll then be able to look at whether it varies among all the individuals, and also we'll be measuring um, factors that are associated with maximum fat use. So ultimately this is hopefully going to inform the development of my PhD, um, where based on certain characteristics, so for instance very high fat burners and very low fat burners, we'll invite them back and we will hopefully um, then test them under different situations. So for example one could be looking at sex differences, so male and female, in response to a high fat meal. Um, I think this would be quite good because we would potentially give a, a milkshake and then also um, an extra bout of uh, milk sugar which is galactose um, and then we'll look at differences. So ultimately I believe that our capacity to use fat as a fuel is very important to our health but just a quick disclaimer, this is not to say that avoiding eating carbohydrates or fat or the fuel used for exercise is better, better for health or health outcomes or for weight loss. Um, we will be looking for participants in our study, um, so this is not a selfish plug to get more followers on Twitter but there's my handle if you'd be interested. We'll also be um, posting on our website 
Um, and we'll also be distributing flyers around University of Bath campus and also um, in the city of Bath. Um, so thank you very much.